hip section right here, and that was all polyfoam in between, which gave it great flexibility, and also fleshed it out. And all of that eventually, you know, just decays and turns to dust. And there's yeah. absolutely no way of preserving it. Yeah. And so I figured, well, if I well, get real energetic sometimes. I do um, have puppet restorers who restored seeds oh, yeah. at Rudolph. Oh, wow. So I have, I have the pros so they, in Hollywood. They, they, they know how to do it. They now. can do yeah. it. Well, I, I, I know how to do it, but I didn't want to put the time into it yeah. because of the number of other projects I have. Oh, man. But the armature is still uh, quite viable. And uh, as, as you can see, he's uh, uh, all the joints still work very, very nicely and very, very smoothly, except for this arm right here, the, uh, the forearm, and you can peel right there. That needs to be reattached. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, as is the case right here, you can see how that goes. Through. But the uh, shoulders work fine, the little mouth works fine, uh, and uh, of course the head. <laughs> Is, is nicely articulated. So now you said that you got this originally from your neighbor. What year no, was no, that? No, no, not my neighbor. Uh, a young man in California had, had contacted me and said he had had this since he was a child. They were neighbors. And uh, uh, and I can't, I honestly cannot remember because they have the rank on their back. It's one of the two. And that he had received it from them some years after the production of the Smoky film, and you know, it, for him it was just a neat toy mascot to have. <laughs> but he said he had gotten to the point, uh, you know, where he was trying to lighten his load, and he offered it to me, and it, I thought a very reasonable deal. And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> stop motion puppetry has never really been my forte, right, uh, or my principal love. Mary, that's always right. Right. But I have other stop motion figures, and so I thought. Yeah, I mean, I grew up seeing these things. And I thought it would be something nice to kind of round things out. Right, right. So, anyway, hold, <laughs> give, hold, give Smokey a hug there. <laughs> hey, Rick, let's turn it. Uh, <clears throat> that's a bit of history so right there, Rick. It's kind of funny, yeah. Um, it's funny that I'm meeting Smokey on his 50th anniversary because <laughs> Thanksgiving this year, the special aired 50 years ago on NBC, um, the day of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, where they had Smokey in the parade for the first time to promote the Rankin Bass special. And James Cagney narrated the special, and he was a tough guy for Arthur Rankin to get for the special. He actually had to go to Lyndon Johnson, the president, to get uh, the Secretary of Forestry, I believe, to give him permission. And then Cagney said that he knew all of Arthur's relatives and kind of made a joke out of that. He made him go through the extra mile that he really didn't have to. Can, uh, can you, can you uh, explain a little or there's uh, of what we're looking at here? Well, it's the actual screen used puppet for the Ballad of Smokey the Bear uh, that aired. It's the third special they did for the GE Color Fantasy Hour yeah, on NBC. What year was that? 1966. 1966. So, 50 years ago, this guy was on TV. Yeah. Very um, rare, right? Yeah, the show actually didn't air too many more times after that, even in syndication. I don't remember. I it popped up here and there, like on a Viacom station. But uh, it's very rare, and I offer it on DVD. I have the GE NBC version of the special. Yeah, I, I recall quite vividly seeing it on television. Oh, yeah. Of course, then again, I, I was of the age and I was uh, very interested in <laughs> Hey, Rick, did they use that puppet in anything else in promotions no. or marketing? Or? No. One time, no. huh? But as you can see, there's a still a publicity shot of the actual puppet uh, on the set. And uh, this version of Smokey is the iconic version of Smokey. He doesn't appear in the special very much. Uh, at the end, they show him putting out a forest fire. Um, basically, they're telling the version of his life as a cub 
and how he became Smokey the Bear. And uh, he, he actually was afraid of forest fires at the beginning of the special, and then he got some brave uh, gumption towards the end and put one out that a gorilla from the zoo started. So this is the version of Smokey that everybody knows. Yeah. Considering everything, the, uh, uh, the material, whatever time that had been handled and all, and everything like that, I thought he was in surprisingly good shape. <laughs> you know, especially considering that for the majority of the life he was in the hands of an adolescent. <laughs> right. For him it was a toy. Yeah. <laughs> for a long time. So it was probably played with a fair amount. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. While, uh, while it ran in his hands, hand, at least for yeah. around there. And um, <laughs> scale, he's quite a bit larger than yeah. all and most of them. Uh, <laughs> although some of them are taller what than are, him. Like what are they smoking? I've held the, uh, <laughs> the red skeleton puppet, and he's about this tall. Wow. And Santa's a little bigger than him, too. But I had another one for the first Christmas that's about this big for a little girl. And then Sister Teresa what was about a little bit bigger. So they're pretty large. Yeah, he's like, you have the old puppets to his kids. You know, like what we normally see used for stop motion. Yeah, uh, one of my friends, that, well, I was very fortunate to know him in his later years, uh, was Lou Boonin. And I'm sure you're familiar no, with that. No, he said he, what did he do? Uh, exactly. the, uh, he was a stop motion animator, uh, working on television primarily. Everything from the, the little grill cream commercial. Oh, yeah. That was some of was his like work a, uh, for real, advertising. He did a feature film of uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, it was the blend of live action and stop motion. Anything you want to say about yeah. it? Yeah. You know, one thing I should say is... I've been doing this Rankin Bass work for nearly 30 years now, and I've only come across a dozen Animagic figures where I actually know where they're at and what collections they're in and, uh, you know, have lo even located them. I um, know, I do. One guy in Japan took a bunch of pictures of a head from a puppet from The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, which was their last special from 1985. But we found two on eBay uh, in the early part of this year, in the winter. Um, there were two elves, two tree elves from Marco, and they were in very bad condition. Uh, legs were deteriorating, uh, eyebrows missing, and so forth. So I alerted Screen Novelties, who bought one of my puppets from me, and they restored Santa and Rudolph, and they know exactly what materials they use, and how to find it, how to restore it, they use all chemicals, they use everything they need to get it back to the way it was, because they restored two of uh, Ray Harryhausen's uh, for the tortoise and the hare, and they actually finished that short because he didn't have that one finished when he started working on feature films. Okay, he's, he's basically just as I received it. Probably has a little more dust on him, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, I, I knew um, what to do and I knew how to do it. It was just simply a thing of I have so many different restoration projects and yeah. other interests. That's uh, okay. It just wasn't high on my list of priorities. Hey, Rick, Rick I was going to ask you, as big a Rankin Bass and historian biographer, how cool is this for you <laughs> to see this? It's very cool. I'm surprised <laughs> there are a lot more people. I know. I mean, if people I, knew uh, what was here. I, but, uh, you know, I, I had had it in the back of my mind that it's, if timing and, and everything worked out, I wanted to be able to get together. So you could see it if, if you wanted to. I yeah. figured you probably would want to. Oh, yeah. Uh, One thing I can tell you right now, um, just looking at this guy here, was in the earlier days, they they didn't use so much of the Chinese paper for the high, changing them out and so forth. Yeah. This looks more like, is that a leather piece that's Could be. Um, pasted on or something? Could be. It, it kind of looks like that. It almost looks like it's painted. 
but I can see it's something on top of something else. Um, later on, like around the time of Santa Claus is coming to town, they started using this Chinese paper where they would paint little flecks on it for the highlights and draw with rapidiograph pens. Um, iris. Yeah, the iris. So it was a, a lot easier to work with, I think, than it was something like this.